had uh, a very enjoyable time listening to everyone submit their their opinions and their experiences and what they've been struggling with. And it's, this is not like my first time listening to it. Um, it's just been a wonderful experience to see how your community is so receptive to one another, encouraging one another. And uh, I, I'd like to just spend a couple minutes and, and share a few opinions of my own about becoming a professional trader. And if I could have a couple minutes, would, would I be allowed to do that? Oh, absolutely, brother. The floor is yours, my man. <laughs> Easy, every man. I don't need permission. So when we listen to um, folks in other industries, uh, high-yield paying industries, uh, many times folks are willing to go through this level of internship. And for some of you that may not understand what that is, uh, it's basically working your rear end off for nothing because you're just looking for an opportunity to get in the door. And before you can even begin thinking about being a professional trader, uh, you have to treat your early years as development as something much like an internship. Uh, you're not going to get paid. No one's going to thank you. No one's going to really appreciate what you're doing. The person that you learned from uh, they get all the, the accolades and such because you're just a, a grunt trying to learn what they produce. And I'm using myself as an example. Uh, but I try to encourage the students that are willing to go through that process. Uh, they need to be reminded that it's going to be hard. Uh, it's going to be thankless in the beginning. Uh, you're not going to get a lot of support from your friends and your family and your spouse. And if you make the mistake of sharing this journey or this pursuit uh, with your coworkers, uh, you're going to be the, the brunt of most punchlines and, and ridicule because you're chasing a pipe dream that may not actually come to fruition. So when you're, when you're first starting out, you have to really warm up to the idea that this is going to take a whole lot more time than you probably think it will. And going through that stage of learning about yourself, how do you do that? back testing, looking at old moves, thinking about what it is that you resonate with. What type of setup? What type of setup that you find in old price action gets your gears going? And spending time with that, collecting data, collecting information that supports the idea of that particular model being viable for you. And does it really match your personality? And all the while, you haven't even pressed the button to enter a trade yet not even on a demo. So your internship as a professional trader is an unprofitable venture in the beginning, not in the sense of going out and spending money. That, that's not where it's at. But the profitability that you find in the understanding and the learning and the grooming that you put yourself through, it's without measure. It, it, there's no way of putting a price tag on that type of experience because most people are not willing to go through that. My uncle was a stockbroker allowed to talk to anybody about buying or selling any shares of anything. He had to do so much cold calling. He used to sit next to low-end brokers that cannot even talk to the potential buyer of the shares and just listen to their pitches. And I used to go to school at the time, computer science, and he was at that job and eventually after getting through that internship he got to the part where he can now start making money you know what he started with he started with pitching a company called action staffing garbage stock he even told me this is a company that's never going to make any money and they're trying to get us to promote this to the people and he had a real issue with it and he was getting a few hundred dollars a week that's it. Now imagine everybody's expectation when they would hear him. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a stockbroker. Well, you're thinking, man, this is Michael uh, Michael Douglas, Charlie Sheen level, you know, stuff. Man, you're, where's your Porsche? Where's your uh, Bentley at? You know, where's your where's your yacht in your mansion? And he was literally making less than three hundred and fifty dollars a week. 
but he was willing to go through that if it was going to get him to the outcome and that professional status as a stockbroker with a high yielding pay. Ultimately, much like his own trading, he was not successful. That brokerage firm that he was working through actually was shut down. When I was a younger man, I went through the process of getting a commercial driver's license. And one of the things you had to do was once you go through the process of getting the paperwork and the permits to do so, you join a trucking school. And this is the route I went through. There's two ways of going about it. One, you join with a company and they put you through the mill or you go through the process of getting out on a range and you go through one skill set per day. And the first skill set that they teach you is straight line backing. That means you get into the tractor trailer, it's a combination vehicle, and they teach you how to stay between two lines, moving five miles an hour maximum. So you had to make sure that your tractor and trailer stayed within these two defined lines, back and forth, back and forth. You had to do 10 repetitions of that. Then you would slip seat with the next student and they would do the same thing. And there was groups of four or five of us. And we did that all day long. That's monotonous, right? But a driver's most problematic time is when he's backing up into a dock, a receiving dock. You don't see very well with it. You have issues with blind spots and you have to learn how to navigate that. When you are looking for things in that mirror as a truck driver, that's much like the draw on liquidity. That premise of looking for where should I be taking this tractor trailer? Where should I put the IBC bumper right to some specific location behind the vehicle? And I have to do it in a controlled manner. It has to be at a pace that's safe. That's like leverage. You don't speed, you don't push the accelerator and make the tractor move faster than you can safely handle it. And you do this skill set for the entire day. And the next day, they put you in a tractor trailer, a different one. Sometimes it was a Kenilworth, it was a Kenworth sometimes it was a Peterbilt, sometimes it was a Mack. So it was giving you experience, which was changing and shifting gears, and not in just one tractor, but different ones. You would do alley docking. You would do uh, three-point turns, things of that nature, uh, serpentine turn, which actually don't even require truck drivers to do that anymore now. But imagine the monotonous task of doing just one thing over and over and over again, all day long, and you're thinking, Back then, I was thinking, man, I, I could be a, a really high-paying truck driver. If I get my own truck, you know, I could make six figures. And that was one of the things that got me interested in wanting to be a truck driver. And once I got the CDL, no company wanted to hire me except for the over-the-road drivers. So I had to submit myself to a company that I drove over the road with them, and they have a trainer. So what they do is they put you behind the wheel of the tractor trailer, and as much as you legally can drive with the hours of service that's allowed for a commercial driver, that's you doing all that driving. And the trainer's getting all the load pay. And guess what I was making? $250 a week. You know how much I was home? Sunday, six hours. But my goal was to be a professional commercial driver. Go through the process, get through it, become a company driver, get experience, learn the ins and outs of the industry. I'd make a couple hundred hours more a week and maybe, maybe get to the point where I'd have enough experience to be able to go out and get my own tractor and I can do my own business. Okay. So I was thinking like, you know, over the top, Sylvester Stallone, that was the whole beginning of all that business. I wanted to, yeah, this is really cool. I want to do that. Something like that. And the long and short of it is, everybody was trying to talk me out of it. No, you're never going to make money doing that. You can't do this. You can't do that. But my goal was I had to go through that process. I had to go through the process that was required for me to get that skill set. I can still get in the behind of a wheel of a tractor trailer and one that has doubles and triples. I can do all that stuff. If I had to go back to a working class hero... I could do that. I had those skill sets. I don't carry a full CDL anymore, but I had one that dropped down to for my RV, but now I have a class A that's no air brake, so I don't really need a CDL anymore. So I gave it up now. No, I, I 
common Class C license. But imagine all of these these ideas. I mean, some of you probably listen to me, and you think, man, this guy's like he's never got his hands dirty. He's this. I've done all those types of things, and they're all the same type of process. You go through the beginning stages with next to nothing in terms of money. But the outcome, the destination that you're aiming for, once you complete it, what you go through to get to that level, that passion, that pursuit of it needs to be greater than the adversities that you're going to endure. And no outside interference is going to cause you to deviate from what's required to go through it. Of all the things I've ever done, trading is the hardest thing. Because you are competing with yourself. See, as a truck driver, oh, well, you know, it's traffic. You can't control that. You can't control that. You're in there. You, have to, you do the job of getting that track trailer, the load, whatever it was that you had to do to get from point A to point B. You had to do your route yourself. They didn't give you directions. Okay? Nowadays, you know, they have navigation systems and such. And they tell you this is the best way. This is the optimal way to get to this location. Shortest miles, best gas miles, and they govern the vehicle so it can't go over 65 mile an hour. All these industry standards are being implemented for cost saving. You have to be willing to submit yourself to that. Everything that's worth doing has some kind of internship, and trading is no exception. It's an industry where you have no ceiling. You can make as much money as you want to make. But if you're not willing to go through the beginning stages where you aren't going to make anything, that means you're back testing. That means you're doing what you're doing right here, right now. You're listening for insight from people that have done it, that are doing it, what they're encountering, how they're overcoming it, how they're dealing with it on a personal level, how they're keeping themselves encouraged. Listen to people that are pillars in the industry and are, are teaching other people how to do it. And the fruits of their, their work is being noticed. Not just me. There's other people out there that are doing it. And the long and short of it is, you got to be willing to put yourself through whatever is required. And you might not. You might not see the benefits of doing it at the time. And it needs to be encouraged along the way, which is why I talk to you in Twitter Spaces. Which is the reason why I talk to you and encourage you with homework assignments. Do this one little task. Focus on this. Do this very thing here. Look at that one particular thing in the price action. Taught my mentorship. I could have did what I did. I was up there at one time. But if you would have saw all of that, and there's there's more videos than that. But if I would have thrown all that up there for anyone that was joining, you would have been intimidated by all that. Because it's too much. It's too much information, and it's very intimidating. So in, in, in an intern, it's like that in a way. They do a lot of work to focus on because they want, they want to put you to this and not make any money doing it and get the experience of being around people that are actually doing it themselves and making lots of money. The people that really – are set in mind to do this. It's in their heart to do it. They're willing to go through that. That means on the weekends, you're sitting in front of your charts, making time, separating yourself from the weekend warrior, the pub life, the club life, the recreational sports, all those things. That stuff's still going to be there, folks. It's all still going to be there when you arrive at the level of professionalism that you are starting to get to as a trader. But you've got to be going through a lot of stuff that's not going to lead to immediate gratification. It's not going to give you things that make you feel good because they're moves that's already happened. But you're collecting data. You're collecting experience and information that you're going to lean on when you put those real live trades on. But unless you have the ability to, to sit through all of that and go through the process of conditioning yourself, Deferring immediate gratification, deferring the need to be profitable, the need to be significant amongst peers in our industry on social media to get your report card for approval that you are a cut above the average. All those things are easy to get, but the skill set that has to be there 
And if you don't have that, you're going to have to work your ass off to get it. And you're going to do a whole lot of boring stuff. Boring stuff. It's boring to backtest because you can't make money on it. It's not sexy. It's not exciting. But the best traders are the ones that fall in love with that process. The fact that you can go into a chart and see something that repeats over and over and over again. The level of continuity. The not surprise that did that. See, I do all those types of things, these quirky little things that may seem like arrogance, but it's emotional stimuli that I'm charging your memory on that very moment when price does exactly what we expected it to do. Because otherwise, this is like, well, you know, big deal. There was no trade placed. That's exactly what backtesting is. You can't place a trade there. But you're conditioning your expectations on a repeating phenomenon. And a professional trader is doing that very thing. He or she's looking for that repeating phenomenon that they've conditioned themselves. They've activated the reticular activating system. That means they've trained their eye to look for specific things. Many times if people had the opportunity to sit down and say, hey, Michael, could you tell me why you didn't look at this fair value gap and this fair value gap? Why would you ignore this order block here? And why would you look at this one? Why do you do that? Experience. You can't get that experience in a book. I can't transfer my experience to you through my videos. The only experience that is transferable and it's usable is when I'm pointing something out in advance. So that way you're walking it with me. Come hell or high water, by hook or by crook, you have to submit to that process. There's no other shortcut. I swear to you, there is not one person walking this planet that's going to be able to take their experience and place that into you. You have to work your ass off and get it yourself. And the way you get that experience, the way you get that confidence to know which one to look for, which one should you filter out, these things are, are, are arrived at by doing these monotonous tasks in the beginning that doesn't feel productive. It doesn't feel like you're going to ever get anywhere doing this because the natural mind says, I need to know what the price is going to do on the right side of that chart. Why am I wasting my time looking over here? Ask that of your surgeon. How many times did they have to look at textbooks, procedures that they have to follow? State and federal guidelines that says they have to do this and not do these other things for the procedure you're getting ready to have done to you. And do you want that surgeon to just be fresh out of school or do you want that surgeon to be well groomed they've been doing it a lot well that's what you want to be running your company right see a professional trader you're running a trading company you're the ceo of it you have to have the the wherewithal to be diligent and demanding of yourself your ceo mindset about your own trading company needs to be firm in its expectations that you have a well-written trading plan and a business plan. They're two separate things, folks. They're two separate things. Just learning how to trade is not enough. Just learning how to read price action, not enough. How are you going to conduct yourself as a business person, as a trader? Are you allowing the trader in you? Are you allowing that person inside of you to trade more times than six times a day? Are you willing to allow that trader that's on you to risk more than 5%, 3%, 2%, whatever it is? You have to be in control. There has to be KPIs. There needs to be standard operating procedures that you are following and you're holding yourself to. If you don't do those things, nobody else is going to submit themselves to do the job for you. No one's signing up to be your trading company intern to do everything for you for free. And many of you expect people like me as an educator to go out here and do things beyond what we're willing to do when what we're doing is already more than enough. The people that know how to do this, that are teaching, we're demanding you to do the necessary and required work. And some of you don't want to hear that. Some of you want to just say, well, you know, there should be an easier way to do this. You've been doing it long enough. Make it simpler. Okay. Go through your old data. Go through your old charts. 
start building a pseudo experience and collection of all these different case studies. And you repeatedly do this daily. Not when you got time to do it. I'll get to it on Thursday. I'll find something on Sunday or whatever, you know, between the games. No, you're running a business. You're trying to start a new company, but you have to learn how to become a CEO. You have to learn how to be a business person, not just a trader. You have to be a good money manager. There's so many things that people walk into this industry thinking, this is going to be easy. All I got to do is press some buttons, press some buttons and money just drops into my account. And man, I can go out there and live the, the fast life. This is so easy. I don't know why I waited so long to do this. When it's entirely way beyond what is expected in terms of what you're going to have to work your rear end for. And immediately, in the beginning, you're not getting that gratification. You're getting no support from anybody. No one's going to tell you, good job. You just did two and a half hours of back testing. You've put some annotations on some charts and journal your observations. Well done. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you keep doing this for a couple months, man, there's no telling how good you're going to get. But your educator, if they're worth their salt, they're going to tell you to do that. And they're going to tell you what you're doing is the right thing. It's not about what's about to happen in the chart. That's all stuff that's really easy. That stuff's easy when you understand who you are, what you're going to do to derail yourself. Because having all the right information and the proof of it is I got it all out there on YouTube right now. But the folks that are not willing to go through the necessary requirements of going through old data, old price charts, old moves, and finding their model. Because I can't, and no other, no other educator can press every single person into a mold that fits everybody's personality. It doesn't work that way. That's my personal belief. And if someone's successful in doing it, I would love to see it. I wouldn't have anything bad to say about it. I just know that I personally can't do it, and I've never seen anybody else be able to do it. Trading's too, it's too difficult of a task. And it needs to be personal. It needs to be unique. And it needs to be form-fitted for your personality. And back-testing, what that does, it gives you a safe environment to go through. If there's anything that's valid about a model or a methodology, it should be readily available in terms of going back and look at data and say, okay, there it is. It's absolutely right there. It's undeniable. You can't argue with it. It's there. It can't be manipulated. It can't be masqueraded as something else. It's exactly what you expect it to be. And also observing when that model may not be profitable, where you may have made a mistake and not look at it and sugarcoat it. So, well, yeah, I probably would have got out before the stop loss died. No, use it as an encouragement saying, okay, even if that was the case and I would have taken a loss there. He said, what many of my students, and these are paid students, what they had done early on when I was telling them to do this, starting in 2016 when I did mentorship for the first time, the number one complaint was, I don't know if this is going to work for me because this is where I like to see it work, but it always fails in other places when I try to do it real time. Well, number one, you're trying to trade before you know what you're doing. Did you see how many times that your model you're trying to look for failed in backtesting? Well, it never failed in backtesting. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. Even one of my best models fails as losing trades. It's not perfect. And if you compound that difficulty, because you have the uncertainty of not knowing when it's not going to work, which is why you have to have a stop loss, which is why you have to have impeccable risk management. You have to have these things. You want to be a professional trader, the number one tenant is preserve capital. That's the first and foremost rule. You have to be able to do that. If you can't do that, it doesn't matter how good a trader you are, because if you're super accurate, doesn't matter. Super accurate is not perfect. And the imperfect, super accurate trader that over leverages will draw down. If you're trying to be a professional trader or a professional fund manager, people don't like to see a lot of volatility in their equity curve. They don't want to see that. Some of you folks out there that share your uh, MyFX books and things of that nature, you know, it's nauseating. If you're going to view it from the lens of a professional fund manager, you would not stay in business with anyone with those types of equity curves. So what I teach is an excellence in mindset about how you have to be diligent about keeping risk 
very, very small, where it removes all the emotion, it removes all the necessity about being right. So what you're doing is you're taking the best environment in beginning and placing yourself in that where it's safe. You can't lose money. You can't lose and you can't make money. And the only thing you're trying to do is teach your new fledgling mind as a trader to see that these things do, in fact, repeat. You can set your watch to it. At this time, this is what should happen. How many times did that thing happen that you're supposed to be studying in the last 20 days? How many times did it occur in the last 40 days? How many times did it happen in the last 60 days? And if you don't have the, the access to that type of, well, for instance, some of the smaller time frames, you can't access that far back. But what's preventing you from doing the next 60 days? Because every day, at the end of the day, you have a new day to, to do a back test on. Go as far as you can looking back, but at least have 60 days worth of it. I'm not saying that that's all you should have, but 60 days, you have the, the minimum criteria for finding something that I teach. And your silver bullet, look at it. It's there. Whether you're trading the London session, the morning session, or the afternoon session, there's a silver bullet every single session. Every single session, it's there. And I read these people that say, oh, well, it failed here. You don't know how to trade it. That's all. You don't know, they're, they're looking at things through a very short-term exposure to it. They think they watched the video, so therefore they know it. They've done no back testing. They've not collected enough sample sets to prove that what they're looking for exists. Number two, that it fits their personality. I'll give you a perfect example. I put 12 models out, okay, 12 of these things in my paid mentorship. All of them make money, all of them. But they're highly demanding in terms of what needs to be there before that trade can be taken. It's not an everyday trading model. It's an every week trading model. Every one of those trading models speaks and operates on a weekly, week, on a week by week basis, at least one trade setup. Well, that's not what I want to do. I've seen you trade multiple times in the same day. Yeah, well, that's me doing multiple models. You can't start with that in the beginning. I didn't start like that in the beginning. But you need to have one thing that you start with. And it might not be your end model. It might not be the, the career model that you stick with for the majority of your life as a trader. So what's the benefit of doing it, Michael? Well, you know, if I'm not going to pick the right one in the beginning because I want to pick the right one, I don't want to waste my time doing something that isn't really meant for me to do. Well, what you're saying is, is you don't want to make it an investment in yourself. And right there, that already reduces your probabilities to less than half in terms of success. Because if you don't have the mindset that, that you're willing to do it, number one, do what? Back test. Go through old data. See if these things occur and which one do you gravitate to. In the beginning, it might not be the silver bullet. It might be something else. It might be the simple optimal trade niche. It might be the model 2022. It might be something else, simple breaker strategy. But until you apply yourself to one thing, looking for it, going through old data, seeing it, you will never have the opportunity to see what your personal character flaws are, where you, you have to expose yourself to uncertainty in the safest format. And that means in backtesting, where the moves have already happened, you're conditioning yourself to look for these repeating phenomena. That way you can't even, you can't even paper trade it. You can't do a demo trade. I mean, I guess you can if you want to do like Forex backtest or something to that effect or trading views, market replay. But I don't even think in the beginning you should be touching that. But you feel like that's what you should be doing because it looks like a video game. Wow, this is what it looks like when I'm in there. No, it doesn't look like that at all. It's faster. It's scarier when you don't know what you're looking for. You've never been there before. It feels like the first time you got on a roller coaster. You know, it's like, man, what's it going to be like? What's it going to feel like? And you're worried about all your potential reactions to what you're going to experience versus this is what I'm supposed to be looking for and this is all I'm supposed to be focusing on. You can't train your perception to filter out all the other things. And that's what you don't understand. When I tell you, if I'm asked by any of you, through either trading views, direct message, or tweets, or responses in my comment sections of my videos, 
How did you pick that one? How did you pick that one right there? How did you know it was going to do that? It's because I went through a long period of conditioning myself, looking for very specific things. And I know that answer doesn't satisfy many of you that are brand new. It feels like there I'm hiding something from you, but I swear to you, it's because I've exposed myself to repetition, like exercise and building muscle with, with weight training. You have to do it over and over and over again. You can't just go into a gym, join a membership, and, and start lifting the heaviest weights you can do and do as many repetitions as you can and walk out and look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Not even in a week. Not even 90 days. Not 120 days either. can't even find yourself looking like that in a year. It takes time. But you have set forth in motion the expectation that you're going to go through that process to get you to that level of professionalism, whether it be a bodybuilder, you know, a you know, weight trainer, a surgeon a pilot, you chose to do this. And I'm going to humbly submit that you have chosen the path that has the highest degree of difficulty that there is. You're competing against the shrewdest of minds in a corrupt industry that's absolutely 100% manipulated, controlled to the smallest degree. And you want to cheat yourself the opportunity. You want to prevent yourself the real opportunity to find your own niche in this by cutting out the most important stage of your development. The part that feels boring, the part that feels like monotonous tasks. I ain't got time to do journaling. I don't have any time to go look at old data. I need to trade. No, how's that working out for you? Because it's probably going to become evident that you're going to be a professional employee for the rest of your life. Unless you make drastic changes in your expectations and what you're willing to put yourself through, it's laid out there for you. Nobody gets to walk out here on their first round and say, you know, I own the world now. You know, I can do all this. It's easy. And I know what I'm doing as a trader. It doesn't work that way. And folks that say that are liars. They're lying. It's easy to fleece people that are ignorant. And if you're listening to me, if you're listening to people that have proven they can trade, we all have the same story. Stop listening to the bullshit. Demand that they can trade. Demand that they can prove it to you. And if they can't do it, tell them to pound sand and get up the road and, and spend your time with someone that knows what they're doing, that's willing to spend the time telling you good advice. Professional trader, you're a long time away from that. Just because you make money and you're profitable, that doesn't mean you're a professional trader. You're not. That means right now you're profitable. But a professional trader, in my opinion, you're doing it at least three years or longer, and it's your 100% source of income. Now, it doesn't mean that that's all you make, but you could sustain yourself with just that. That's a professional trader. I read in books when I was younger that a professional trader, and I think it's not a mistake, I think it was Jack Swagger. You know, he, his view, or somebody, either Jack or uh, Alexander Elder, one of the two mentioned that they have to at least make 50% of your income to be considered a professional trader. Uh, no, that's, sometime, that, that's somebody that's a part-timer to me. Unless you make 100% of your livable wages, and you've been doing it for at least three years, I don't think you have any business calling yourself a professional trader. Because you know, everything could crash and burn. I had a period of luck that lasted for nine months when I didn't even know what the hell I was doing. And then suddenly everything became impossible. Have you given yourself the flexibility to observe that in your own experience? Think about that for a, minute, for a second. Just think, what happens if what you're doing in the early stages just happens to be luck? Are you prepared? to deal with that, where everything feels like it's collapsed on you. Do you know how to avoid that fear or uncertainty about that? Because I know some of you are cringing right now thinking, shit, that's what I've been afraid of the whole time. I don't want to waste all this time and then find out I can't do it. You remove all that uncertainty and fear with back testing. See, I already know. I already know. Like I told you last week, before this previous week came, I already know I'm making money. I already know I'm making money, period. In a story, I know these moves are going to be there. I know these models are going to be there. So you don't have the conviction and, and confidence to trust these things. You haven't conditioned yourself yet. 
professional traders have an edge mentally that they are willing to submit themselves to processes, protocols, and procedures and routines that leads to a measurable outcome that repeats over time. Not every time, not 100%, but more times than not. And if you combine that with impeccable risk management, sound money management, not over trading, not over leveraging, not trying to push that's well beyond what's reasonable in terms of results. Trading can become very enjoyable. The emotion that you get from doing it will be devoid of fear and greed, but a sense of satisfaction. Just like a real profitable business owner that has a well-oiled engine. Everybody's doing their job. Everybody's been properly trained. There's a place for everything, and nothing is disorganized. A CEO in a company like that, they're content. They're happy. They're satisfied. They're fulfilled. They have employees that want to work for them because they are appreciated and are not being asked to do menial job tasks for a little bit of money. That's how you have to treat you because you're the CEO, you're the analyst, and you're the trader. You have to manage all of those internal personalities. They're, they're different roles, but it's you having to do it all. And see, so you didn't think about that when you got involved in this. You thought, oh, all this is just clicking some buttons. And there's so many things that you have to go through that are mental hurdles that you can't fully appreciate. I mean, I'm sure you probably read some trading books, and they probably said, you know, hey, trading is a, a game of probabilities, and nobody does everything perfect. And you can do this if you have this many R multiples behind your trade and you risk this much money per trade. And this is what the spreadsheet says you should make. But all that goes out the window as soon as you go in with real money. What have you conditioned yourself to expect? The way you navigate the uncertainty and the emotions and the psychological turmoil that you put yourself through is you lean on the experiences that you gleaned from old data, then taking that old data, start tape reading. You're not pushing a demo, you're not entering a paper trade, and you're not even doing the stage of market replay. Ugh, you're telling me I gotta back test, then I gotta look at tape reading, I haven't even done a trade yet. I need to be inspired, ICT. If you're not inspired by doing the right procedures, nothing else I'm gonna say to you is gonna help you. Remember, your surgeon, they didn't give him a scalpel and say, hey, <laughs> man, you look exactly like George Clooney on ER, man. Let me, let me just give you the scalpel right now because you're going to charm these patients into trusting you. Don't worry about it. If you make mistakes, yeah, don't worry. We got insurance. That's not how they do things, folks. And that's the same mentality you're trying to apply to trading. Oh, uh, well, you know, I'll just swing it. Nobody has a long-term career going into this industry trying to wing it. it doesn't happen you have to go through the processes the same thing that that surgeon had to go through textbook examples textbook examples and then he put them in front of a cadaver watching someone they you know do the do the process in front of them because they want to see do you have the stomach to do it because there's a whole lot of people that talk a good game but as soon as they see something like that they lose their lunch. Well, how can you be a surgeon? You can't do it. And in back testing and in tape reading, you'll know if you can't do this. That's not to convince you early on to quit before you should, but you know who you are. You know what your limitations are. If you're not disciplined, if you are not responsible, you're gonna see that in your back testing. Are you able to keep a routine? Here's a perfect illustration. Listen, folks, listen. Can you set a schedule? Every day at this time, I do 45 minutes of back testing on one market. Not 20, not different pairs over here and different there. One market, back test it on every time frame, 45 minutes. I think that if you go from the weekly down to a one-minute chart, it should take you about 45 minutes. 
If you're really being diligent about recording your observations, staring at the chart, looking for things that may have been taught by me or maybe someone else, and having that annotated and, and logged. And then the, the very next day, you get to those charts the same time and you spend that same 45 minutes. Can you do that for a month? Can you do that for two months? Some of you can't even do that. But you expect to beat this business, this industry, with real professionals on the other side of your trade? I'm not trying to be demeaning or talk down to you, but I want you to understand that that's the, the reality of this. There are people out here that know exactly what the hell they're doing. And if you half-ass this, you're going to get results that you don't want. And then you're not going to have an enjoyable experience doing it. You're going to be scared, regretful that you did it. And you're going to know that you rushed into it before you were ready. Professionalism is keeping a schedule and a routine and adhering it to it. It's sticking to that schedule and that routine. Anything that upsets that schedule needs to be paramount, big, huge things, because the market have very specific timings. And if you're not willing to be able to be in front of those charts at that time, you're going to miss it. You'll chase. You'll have fear of missing out. You'll wait for what you're going to call confirmation. Oh, I missed the actual time. I was messing around with PlayStation. I was on Xbox Live. I was doing this and doing that. <sighs> well, it, it, I would have saw that trade right there. I definitely would have got in right there. So yeah, it looks like about 10 more handles still of movement. Let me just get in here right here. No. You blew it. You messed up. You have to do it all over again the next session or the next day. You'll discover that you don't have the patience that you think you're going to have. You'll discover that you're not as organized, as disciplined. And that's the important things to learn early on in an environment that's safe, where you can't lose money. You don't want to discover with a live account that you are impatient, you're prone to be impulsive, and you're a gambler. Because your account will show you in terms of monetary loss. And now you just compounded the difficulty in learning how to do this. And you're pushing that level of professionalism as a target further down the road. There's ways to do this correctly, and there's a whole lot more ways to do it incorrectly. In the beginning, you have to accept the fact that you are an intern. You are an intern at a trading company that you're going to start later on. You're working for no wages right now. You're in it for the experience, just like an intern is. What's it like to be in this industry? What's it like to be around people, the movers and shakers, that get things done, that everybody wants to listen to? And that experience where you're willing to put yourself through all of that just for the sake of getting and garnering that experience, you can't buy that, folks. That's why internships are sought after because you can't replace that with a college degree. You can't, ex you can't express that level of understanding of being in that industry unless you were there doing it. It can't be transferred. Nobody can give it to you. You go through it and you glean it by being there and being present. And if you're an intern and you're not on time, they get rid of you. There's a lot of people that want to be in positions that have internships because the jobs on the other end of all that are high-yielding income jobs. This, you have to be an intern. Then you have to set it up like a job, part-time job in the beginning. Eventually, you want to transition to the equivalent of a full-time job that replaces your full-time wages. And then you want to treat it like a business. Some of you aren't prepared to be a business owner. You're not responsible. You're not organized. You don't, you're not able to keep good records of anything. And that's all going to be problematic, and you need to discover all those things early on. You don't want to find out that you're a poor business owner just because you can make money in trades. If you don't know how to manage the money correctly, keep things in order, pay your taxes, 
you're going to find yourself in a lot of trouble. And it's all avoidable. All these things are absolutely avoidable. But they're not learned real quick, real fast. There's no shortcut to it. There's no fast tracking to it. It's going to take a lot more time. It's going to take a whole lot more time and energy in the beginning stages. But every single one of my profitable students, they submitted themselves to this. And if you ask them, they'll tell you, yeah, it, it sucked. In the beginning, it, I didn't really like it. it. It felt like I wasn't getting anywhere. But then suddenly, I started seeing some things in my observations in price. I was picking up on things that I really wasn't expecting to see. And then they fell in love with it because now they're, know, they're, they're, they're knowing beforehand, before they sit down from their charts, they know that model is going to be in the price charts. They just don't know how much it's going to move. That's the uncertainty. What's the magnitude of the move? Is it going to be a larger move that's part of a weekly range run? Or is it going to be just a session run? But that model is going to be there. My model is going to be there next week. Every single day, my models, plural, are going to be in price action next week. It's going to happen. I don't need to be convinced by anybody else. I don't need to lie about it. I don't need to worry about it. I don't have to have any anxiety about it. I know those things are going to be there. That's a level of confidence that comes by way of doing this for a very long time. And it has conditioned me to expect and appreciate the fact that it's continuous, which is why I have a slogan every week, every day, and it won't stop. I do that to remind you also and the folks that put themselves through this. They discover that that is true. And nothing can shake them. Their level of confidence is unrivaled, which to the unlearned, the uninitiated, it seems like arrogance. It's not. It's just extreme levels of confidence. You don't worry about being, be, being made redundant at your job. You don't care what the economy is. Who cares how much gas costs? Who cares? Who cares how much groceries are going to cost? If you have a skill set like this, you can outpace all of that stuff. And the things that you worry about right now, they're minuscule things. That you won't even worry about those things at all. Price tags are not a factor. There's so many levels to this journey that you're going to go through. And you've got to make it pleasant. Enjoy the whole process. Don't make it harder than it needs to be because it is hard. It's very, very difficult. It's hard to stay focused. It's hard to stay motivated in the beginning because you're not making any real money. And if you have a spouse or a significant other, they're really not going to understand how much level of commitment you need to place on this. Why are you looking at that stuff? Why do you keep doing this? What have you made by doing all that? Have you made any money yet? Well, you know, I got to do this and do that. Don't, don't, don't waste your time. Don't waste your time explaining all that stuff. Because all it's going to do is further spur on the likelihood of you quitting because you love who you're with. You don't want them to be unsettled by what you're doing. And you love them so much that you're willing to let go of your dream. And I don't want you to do that because you can be married to someone that you love and living a monogamous relationship by all standards, looking like you're the model spouse. But if you didn't do this and you really want to do it and you gave it up because they didn't want you to do it or they couldn't understand it, you're going to be miserable. You're going to be thinking our lives could be so much better and different and, and significantly easier if I just would have dug my heels in and spent less time trying to explain something that they're not going to understand. My wife literally is 12 feet from me, and she still thinks this is like a video game. She doesn't understand what it is that we do. She has no comprehension of whatsoever what this is all about. I had in our relationship early on, I try to explain, uh, she ain't interested. Okay, done. But if I'm doing this, just understand that while I'm doing it, I can't be distracted. Let me do what I have to do. And when I'm done, then it's family time. And I wasn't doing very well at that. So I failed as a father and a husband in that regard. So you have all the advantages right now by hearing someone that made all the wrong moves to schedule all that stuff, you have to be very diligent about managing your time. 1440 as a video, you're on my YouTube channel. 
It's not about trading, but it's more important. Right now, before you learn how to trade, you need to master your time because that's something that you don't get more of. And you have to schedule it and be diligent about how you spend your time. And I want to commend all of you that are sitting here right now listening to other people and, and listening to me. The folks that spend their weekends pursuing this, wanting to learn more about it, and being around people that do it, that is it. That is one of the biggest testimonies that you have exactly what's required to do this. Everybody else is out there chasing tail, wanting to get drunk, blaze up. No. You're here being a part of something that is encouraging, that has a, a community vibe that is, in my opinion, the best. I didn't build this. Kit and everyone of you, you built this. And I'm so really amazed to, to see the honesty from everybody coming forward and sharing their observations, their, their hardships, and encouraging one another. I think that's amazing because this industry right now, because of social media and the competition between gurus and mentors and who can trade better than this one, and who, it's all bullshit. When you start making money, you're not going to worry about what I'm doing and what I'm going to eventually put out in a, in a book or a video if I ever do it again. You don't give a shit. Nobody gives a shit about that. And that's exactly how it should be. You're living your life. You're here to get a skill set so that way you can live your life the way you want it on your own terms. There's nothing wrong with that. But everything in this industry right now is all about toxic competition. Who can take the most from the other person? Who can make more off of more off of that one and belittle this one? And you need to be placing yourself in the presence of other people that want to build you up and lift you up. And personally, that this is one of those types of things here in this community. I think it's very admirable what Kit felt, you know, held together here and maintained. And I, I told him and we were having our, our discussion. Unfortunately, the, the, the bandwidth didn't allow for a real nice video playback. But I told him, I said, you, what you're doing is awesome. And I want to see what you do with it. I want to see it grow. It should grow. And it shouldn't just be about me or the things that I taught. And I was wonderfully pleased to hear how there was another person here today that doesn't trade with what we trade with. And you were very accepting to them. It was very disarming to, to hear how you said, you know, you, we don't, discriminate against anybody else that may trade differently because there's lots of ways to make money in this folks. What I've taught and what I do is not the only way to skin this cat. There's lots of ways to do it, but it's important that you learn from somebody that actually can do it. And they break it down and explain to you, this is the process. This is the order of what you should be focusing on right now in the beginning. It's not about making money. Everything has a learning curve, and this is one of the steepest learning curves you'll ever put yourself through, and it's hard. It's a whole lot of uncertainty, things to worry about. Will you be able to do it? How long is it going to take? When am I going to be profitable? How do I know this, and how do I know that? All those questions get answered by the process of going through everything that's been prescribed to you. And the unfortunate thing is you're not willing to make the investment. Some of you, you're scared. Man, what if I put in all this time and it doesn't work for me? Put in a little bit more time. Because when you learn this and you look back and you think to yourself, man, I almost talked myself out of this. What the hell was I thinking? Look at this. Look what I'm able to do right now. I could walk out there on Monday and I can make myself $2,500 and not even over leverage. And make it and stop trading and I'm done. How many people do you know in your friends and family circle makes $2,500 in a week? Think about it. There's some people that don't even make that in a month. You're learning how to do something as hard as it may seem right now. When you get this skill set, it's something that no one can take from you. Nobody can take it from you. 
And then now, because you'll learn how to do it yourself, you'll get experience, and then you can share it with your children and then help them remove themselves from slavery because that's exactly what your job is. They've convinced you that that wage that you're going after in that 40-hour pay week, or if you're a manager and you're in salary in the 50, 60, 70-hour work week that you're probably putting in, they've convinced you that that amount of money was worth prostituting your time for them. Really? You're willing to put yourself through that bullshit just to get bread on a plate. Be told when you can and can't. And you better show up on time or you're going to get written up and potentially lose your job. You're willing to put yourself through that, but not this. When this has a higher potential yielding income and a schedule that you can make whatever you want it to be. You can live wherever you want to live, drive whatever the fuck you want to drive, do whatever you want to do. And nobody's telling you otherwise. There's nothing better than this. Nothing. Not one thing out there better than this. I'm an entrepreneur, ICT. I want to do this and do that. That's wonderful. I think, personally, many of you that want to have other businesses and things like that, when you start making serious money doing this, you're going to be like, ah, fuck this. I don't want to have employees. I don't want to have a brick and mortar building to worry about. I don't want to worry about all that stuff. I want to be a digital nomad. I'm going to bounce around, do what the hell I want to do, fly around here, visit this one, do that, and live your life fast and loose. Some of you think that's unobtainable. As long as I can make you know, $1,000 know, here and there, you're thinking too small. You're thinking too small. How far do you want to go? What defines professional to you? Professional trader. Your professional money maker. Your professional risk manager. Your professional speculator. You're embracing the uncertainty of you might gonna you might have it wrong once in a while, but you're not freaking out when you do it. Some of you aren't prepared for that right now. You don't want that. You're trying to hide yourself from that inevitable losing streak, not losing trade, losing streak, multiple losing trades. Oh, my goodness. What am I going to do if it happens? You're going to reduce risk and you're going to follow your model. How hard is that? See how fast that is to remove all this what if thinking. But see, you can't appreciate that because you don't know what that model is for you yet. You have no experience in seeing how many times it presents itself in old data. That's the key. That's the very thing. That's your secret weapon that gives you the confidence to keep doing it and sticking to it. And it's the same thing you're going to apply in the charts that's forming live, real time. You're expecting those same things to unfold candlestick by candlestick, whatever time frame you're using. And because you've seen it so many times before, because you've studied a very specific model, your reticular activating system has been keyed up. That means that you're seeing something that you have grown an affinity for. You, you want to see something in price action that you believe is your model. And because that's your model, everything else in the chart is filtered out. And the thing that you're looking for, as soon as it manifests itself in price, it's like illuminated. It's standing out like a spotlight. Boom! Here I am. And you're on time. Let's get to work. And that's dynamite. That's exactly what professional traders do. They know exactly what the fuck they're looking for, when it's supposed to be there, and they're showing up on time to engage it. They manage it. They don't put on large risk. They don't do the maximum 15 contracts because their funded account company says they can. How much can you how much can you, the trader, the professional trader, the CEO of you incorporated trading, how much can you take on as risk and not feel any emotion? But I can't get rich ICT doing that. Bullshit. That's bullshit. Because apparently you don't know what compound interest is because you don't need a large rate of return to get rich. You need something that repeats over and over and over again. There has to be consistency, that cookie cutter approach that needs to be applied to your trading. That's your model, that's the thing, that's the edge. And then compound interest is 
a very small rate of return, very, very small rate of return, can compound over time. I ain't got time, ICT. Really? You got the rest of your life to fucking slave for that job. You ain't bitching about that, are you? I got to get out of this job. I got to do something else. No, no, you're, you're content there. You like the flavor of the bullshit they feed you. You love it. Because if you didn't love it, you'd be making changes about doing it. And guess what? You're here doing that very thing. You're looking for a way out. So you stay in that cell that's unlocked willfully. I just kicked the door open again, reminding you all you have to do is step out here. There's a big world out here waiting for you. Huge, boundless opportunities. But you have blinders on and you're holding them. You won't put them down. You're trying to talk yourself out of it because you're scared. You've been conditioned. You're all institutionalized. And it's scary to step out here and try to do something on your own. Yeah, you might lose money. But guess what? You're losing money every day that you go to work. You're paying taxes. And when you spend your money, that's not a write-off. You can't, you can't do anything with that. As a business owner, you can do all kinds of things that the average person can't. As a business owner, I get paid to drive the vehicles that I own. I get paid to go on vacations and spend money living the high life. All those things are write-offs. Gas in my cars, even though they're eight cylinders, I don't care. That's a write-off. That, that lowers my taxable income. When I was in school, I wasn't taught that. They don't want you to know these types of things. They want you to have ignorance. And this industry is so competitive. They're going to tell you this is too complicated. It's fucking not complicated. I literally just did a tweet earlier today while listening to all of you. Very simple approach to doing one model. And when you understand that language, it's the silver bullet model, by the way, but in a text format that can fit in a small little segment of price or, or not price, but of paper, like a business card. But there's difficulty in someone seeing that for the very first time and understanding what does that mean? Right. What does draw on liquidity mean? It means that the market is going to gravitate towards that liquidity. Which one, ICT? Because I see relative equal highs and relative equal lows. Which one do you look for? Where do you think the weekly chart is going to expand? Your bias is established with the weekly chart. Then every session and every day bias needs to be in alignment with that. Then you have high probability. Ooh. So you're saying that I could see low resistance liquidity runs if both of those are in agreement. Yep, that's it. There you go. It's done. What are you worrying about? Why are you complicating it? I say all this stuff in the videos. I didn't hide it from you. But you're looking for something that you have a preconceived notion about. This is what I need to hear. If he says this, it'll make it easier. Instead of just listening to everything that I'm educating you with or anybody else that can prove that can trade, if they're teaching you something, a well-defined approach to doing it, listen. Don't have selective hearing. Listen. If they're taking the time to spend on you, teaching you, educating you, it's worth it for you to be taking notes. Not just write down the notes and never refer back to them again. Wait a day. Come back to them and read them again. And what does it mean? Does you, do you feel any different? in terms of what you were taking down in terms of notes. Go back and listen to the medium that they, educators, me or other, anyone else, have produced for you. And you'll be surprised what you think is now new. It was added after the fact. When it's, just because you just, it's a lot of information. There's a lot of things going on between the high and the low of the day. There's a lot of things that are going on. But here's the wonderful thing. You don't need to worry about every single aspect of what it is that I know about the marketplace and what I'm able to teach you. You just need to find one small little segment of price action that repeats that you can see easily, that you can time. This is what fits my personal life. I can do this because it fits my life. When you focus on that and you put yourself in that situation, it allows you to groom your expectations as a future professional trader. But if you, if you don't have a target and a routine that you adhere to, 
you're not going to get there. It's going to be next to impossible for you to find consistency. It's not going to give you the confidence to stick with it because you have no baseline. You have no way to evaluate your progress. But as you do more back testing, as you do more things that repeat over and over again, seeing how these things repeat, you find that this was a lot less complicated than you thought it was going to be. You find that, wow, this is something that I made more scary than it really is. And I almost talked myself out of it. And I think about that myself. I'm going to say this and I'm going to close it. There's so many times where I felt that I was wanting to quit when I was 20. And every single time I put it down, I wanted to do it more. And each time I needed a break, I put it down, I'd want it more, more than I ever did. If you feel that way, stop resisting it. You are a traitor. If you feel that way, you are. You just haven't groomed yourself into a highly efficient, profitable trader. And that's something that someone with your mindset, if you feel that way, that is obtainable. But you have to do a lot of things and prune that tree each day of the things that are time-wasting, things that are focusing your attention on the what-if thinking that is negative, hanging around people that are not going to be encouraging to you. Think about your friends. Where are they at in life? Do they have professional careers? Do they have, you know, Solid family lives? Are they drama? Do they drain you? When, you? when you get away from them, do you feel like, hey, I'm glad to be away from that person? If that's like that for you, and I had a lot of that when I was younger, cut that stuff off. Learn how to do this. And then once you learn how to do this and you're consistently profitable, maybe if it's in, in your interest, Go and uh, try to try to talk them into trying to do it yourself. They're so, well, try to get them to do it. If they don't want to do it, that's fine. But if they're holding you back, and there's many times that friends and family are going to do that very thing. Don't go, if you're new, don't go and start telling your friends, yeah, I'm going to learn how to trade about, I watch this guy, he does this, and you know, it's, it's free, so it's not really no risk and such. Don't do that because they're career workers. Chances are they're going to tell you, oh, don't do that. Don't do that. You might actually get somewhere. And then they got to feel bad about having never had the willingness to want to make a change in their personal life either. Just do it. Don't talk about it. Just do it. Be diligent. Forge responsibility. Self-control. All those things are scheduled in your day. You do this. You got to be in front of your charts at this time. And you have to end that day of study at this time. You submit yourself to that time. Can you keep yourself on a schedule? That regimen, going through the process of going through this very thing every single day, even on weekends, can you do that? Chances are some of you may not be at that stage where you can right now, and you're going to have to grind your heels in and say, okay, it's uncomfortable. It sucks because I don't really understand what it is I'm doing, but let time do its work. It'll teach you what it is that you're fearful of right now. The concerns of, I'm not going to be able to see this. How does he know this? And why does he know that this is going to be this or that? How does he know price is going to react this, this way? Why is the stop loss here or there? How can he do this and how can they do that? How does, how does the student trade this way and the other students are doing that, but they're both making money? All those are answered by you just simply doing it. And you're going to discover the things that you're making a mountain out of, these little tiny concerns. They're like small, wet, like small little pebbles in your shoe. It's hard to walk a long journey with a rock in your shoe. I get it. I know. Just get rid of it right now. Remove all the excuses. Yes, it's going to take a lot of time. Yes, it's going to take a lot of, well, discipline. And you may not have it yet. And the only way you get it is you forge it. And place yourself around people that are supportive. They're either doing what you're doing or they've been doing what you're trying to do. And that's a wonderful support structure. I wish I had this. 
when I was coming up. I wish I had this. You all have advantages that people like me didn't have. There's really no excuse for you not to be successful at this. Like you have information at your fingertips by me and other people that know how to trade, and it's accessible to you. And there's people out there that bitch and complain instead of just doing the work, sitting in front of your charts, getting used to doing the very thing that you're going to spend the rest of your life doing. If you want to be a professional trader, okay, accept the fact that you're going to be staring at charts, looking for things that you don't fully understand right now, but you're expecting them to form on a time delivery schedule that's going to be there every single day. When you go to work on Monday, that menial task that your employer asks you to do, it's the same thing all the time, isn't it? You do this, this is what happens. And if it goes off the rails a little bit, you have a protocol that you have to go through and then everything resumes back to what you're supposed to do normally and your workday resumes as it would be. When it's time to go home, you punch out, drive home, you have uncertainty. You might not make it home safely, God forbid. There's risks in everything. But you're not telling yourself, man, I can't have this job. I can't work this job anymore. Going home from that job might get me into a car accident. I might mess up my new paint job, my new wrap, my rims going through Taco Bell. <laughs> so there's, no, there's really no excuse why any of you can't get here. The trails have been blazed ahead of you. The information has been laid in front of you. All you have to do is show up. You need to put the work in. And I'm confident that everyone that puts themselves to the task, you will arrive on time. The timing that was perfect for you, and you can't schedule it. You can't say, I need to be profitable by this time. It doesn't work like that. It's not like a weight loss program where you can say, okay, in six months, I want to be 20 pounds lighter, whatever it is. That's something that's realistic. This is uncertain because you are a real living organism that has a personality. You like what you like. You don't like what you don't like. And right now, you don't want to back test. You don't want to do these things because they're uncomfortable and they're unprofitable and you can't make money with them right now. And nobody on social media is going to appreciate you doing it because they think you should be trading with real money. You think you should be trading with real money. And you can't be properly trained to prepare yourself for the uncertainty of trading with real money until you do these types of things to a degree where you're no longer influenced by the results in tape reading and then demo. So there's a whole lot of time. There's a whole lot of time ahead of you that you have to do things apart from pushing the button with a real account, apart from trying to get a funded account challenge passed. That's not what some of you want to hear, but that's exactly what you have to hear and you have to accept it. There's no shortcut. I promise you, if there was, I would honestly sit down and tell you everything, how to avoid all this stuff, but there is no other way. Unless you have something out there that's going to produce a signal that you may not even fully understand why it's doing it. And if you can do that, then God bless you. you know, <laughs> that's not me. I got to know why something works. And I teach that way. So for the folks that want to learn from me, they have that information. It's not just, well, I think it might do this because the last time I did it, my elbow ached, and there it is. There's logic behind it. It's measurable. It's statistically probable to repeat in the future more times than not. So, I, like I said, I, I've listened to many of you today, and it was very encouraging to listen to the, the wide degree of unique experiences and your observations and your growth and how you feel about where you are and your learning and giving yourself an at a boy, at a girl type, uh, you know, that you're proud of yourself. And I'm proud of all of you. I'm proud to hear all of you have this measure of community because it's really lacking in this industry. It's too toxic. And it's like an oasis here. And I think more people should be involved in it. I think they should join it and, and be a part of it and be honest and, and, and share their own observations. My only ask and request is, if I'm listening, please don't draw any special attention to me. I'm in the audience. I'm not the star here. And I thought about 
many times doing this very thing here, but I don't, I don't want any spotlight on me. I'm here listening to all of you. I love listening to all of your testimonies. I love listening to your experiences. That's exactly the currency I asked for. That's the very thing I asked for. That's the fuel behind me teaching. I want to hear your unique experiences because they're all treasures to me. They're gifts that you can't put a price tag on. And they all have an impact on me emotionally, psychologically, as a teacher, as an educator, as a human being. I appreciate all of the time that you have made available in sharing what it is that you've gone through and what you're going through. And I'm excited to hear what you're going to do in the future. If this community can thrive, and I think you know, the folks I listen to today, they seem like they appreciated it too. And there should be more awareness of it, more engagement. And I promise you, there's people out there that don't like you finding yourself. They're going to do everything they can. That's how the enemy works. They're going to do everything they can to disrupt your, your progress and your growth. Don't let them. Don't let them. Just keep your nose in the charts. Keep your eyes set on the target. Where do you want to be? And you might not know where that is right now. What defines your success? Where do you find professionalism as a trader? You're going to find that that will change. It'll morph the more time you put into this. And when you discover who you are as the trader, that you don't even understand who that is right now. You haven't met them yet. You have not met that trader that you're going to become. So you want to make sure you feed the insights that you're taking in as information. You want to filter out all that bullshit. You want to filter out the toxicity, the people that don't have any faith in what it is you're doing or want to try to derail you or say you're wasting your time. Fuck them. You, you don't want to listen to that stuff. Nobody wants to be around somebody like that. And don't make allowances for people to step into your development and your journey to do those types of things that make you feel like you're wasting your time or cause a second guessing of something. There's too much evidence out there now to know that what you're doing is profitable. There's a way for you to do this. There's so many people out there coming from different walks of life, different age brackets, different cultures. Language barriers don't exist in this. They can find their own model, and once they do, they're set free. You get wings, and you can fly as high as you want, baby. There's no restrictions on how far you can go. That's the wonderful thing that you can't fully appreciate right now. And I'm excited that day when you discover, holy shit, I could literally go out there and make five figures every week. You may tell me that I can make six figures inside of four weeks. Yeah. Hello. Welcome to the party. So I'm going to turn it back over to all of you. I just want to thank you once again for the opportunity to be able to share my own uh, opinion, if you will. But uh, I, I'm very much encouraged by everyone, and I wish you all much success, and I hope you all continue doing what you're doing.